Brian Barchak. Brian Barchak. Brian Barchak. That's right. They banned the sale of spider ball python. <laughs> And for anybody that might not be familiar with spider gene ball pythons, it's linked to a neurological condition known as wobble syndrome. Wobble is so bad, the spider cannot eat when it's hungry. He has horrible balance and can do very little compared to a normal ball python. So they really have no sense of balance. They'll just fall off of whatever there is. It's not fine. They have a neurological defect. If you flip them over, they won't be able to write themselves again. This is not what should be happening. So the spider gene was discovered in 1999 by Ned, and it was actually discovered in a wild caught ball python. The first spider was found by and imported by Nerd. It was an adult, that's what I understand. Nerd can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I know it was surviving in the wild. It wasn't hatched out of an egg. It was like thriving. Kevin McCurley from Nerd, who is a massive ball python breeder and one of the founders of the ball python trade. And Kevin bred that animal and turned out to be incomplete dominant. Now, the whole reason it was named Spider or is named Spider now is actually because Kevin called it a spider web ball python because he felt like the patterning almost looked like a spider web. The genotype would be the spider ball in this case but the phenotype is that spider-like webbing. So I'm the, the originator of the spider ball gene. So it started from an animal that came into the country as an import. It looked really weird, really excited to get it. I ended up uh, reproducing it and basically proved it as a dominant gene. When did you notice the neurological? Did you notice it or did somebody else notice it? I noticed right off the bat. Uh, so <laughs> basically the, the first spider ball had like a little bit of this. And all right, it, to me it was kind of endearing. It really okay. was. It was? I, I was, didn't phase me one bit. And then I hatched out the first three babies. It, 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 none of them was really bad, but it was just, you know, a little bit of this. I didn't get, you know, this kind of crazy looping. Rob. Hey, what's up? You know Kevin, the guy we work for? Yeah, yeah, I know Kevin. Okay, so he won't say it on tape, but I need to know what, he he, he like discovered genes, he did something. He was like important in the ball python industry, but he won't tell me, no, he won't tell me why, because he's so humble, he's. Well, <laughs> here's the deal, Kevin was like the originator for creating a lot of the world's first ball python morphs, reticulated python morphs, captive breeding and water monitors and all sorts of stuff. There's so many things that he was the first person to do that like I, it's, it's hard to even describe. Wait, so let me stop you there. Do you have the credentials to be giving me this information right now? Do you have any experience with snakes? I, this is my first week keeping snakes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been keeping snakes now since I was uh, 14. So that's 16 years ago, almost 17 years now I've been keeping snakes. How long have you been here? I have been coming to nerd for about 13 or 14 years, and then I've officially been working here for about two years on payroll. But I used to volunteer here. I used to just come here and scrub tubs so I could be around all the people who knew more than me, and I would just learn and learn and learn as much as I could. I didn't really do too much. Okay, so you're a nerd. Okay, yeah, we get it. All right, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And he's also the manager here. He didn't say that. So, like, he yeah, definitely so has some clout. Now, I am the sales manager here at Nerd. <laughs> so, we started from the bottom. Now we're here. You think it'd start and with that, but yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I probably should have started with that. That yep. probably would make more that's, sense. Dude, that's literally why, that's why I do what I do. Uh, All right. So, starting with reticulated pythons, Kevin was the first person to be breeding all sorts of reticulated python morphs like Golden Child, the Cow Reticulated Pythons, Orange Ghost Stripes, Phantom Stripes. He was the first person to produce these animals. And so things like the cows, these guys right here, which are people, like, these are incredible. Just awesome looking snakes. She's got a bit of a meal in her there. But the cows, we, he was the first person to produce these in the world. No one else had ever seen a cow before him. Uh, let's see, what else? We got things like Golden Childs, where it's got no pattern on it. It's got this nice dark look to it. First person in the world to produce the Golden Childs. Uh, the Jaguars, over here, first person in the world to breed those. So, I don't really keep many ball pythons because I have branched out into other uh, species, but the only ball python that I keep is actually a bumblebee ball python, which I think Kevin might have showed off in one of his other films. Uh, but check this out. This is just like the coolest thing. The first bumblebees I saw looked a lot like this, where they had that nice white in the sides. They had lots of yellow in here. The reduced pattern, I love that they have green eyes. Just like 
So this so is something Kevin cool. Kevin came up with. Yeah, and this he was the first person in the world to Oh, hey Mr. Humble, how you doing? A ball python no. combination. Kev Kevin won't talk about himself, so I'm having I'm having Rob do it, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is actually where I was grabbing some of the spiders from yeah. and I, right. I grabbed this. One of our reader rooms. It's very pretty snake. Right here. So this is actually the first ball python genetic mutation for like two different genes in one snake was the bumblebee and like i said when i first saw these man they blew my mind i couldn't even believe what i was looking at this is just like one of the still to this day probably my favorite morph of ball python i could i didn't see wobble on this snake no 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 this snake is really great and she's one that i've raised up from a little baby and the only time that I've ever seen her head wobble a little bit is when I'm feeding her. Her She'll like maybe move her head side to side a little bit, but I honestly see that in lots of ball pythons when they're feeding. She's a real solid animal, moves around, doesn't have any mobility issues. She's super healthy. Honestly, she's got a huge feeding response. When I open up that tub, a lot of times she comes flying out thinking she's getting fed. Kevin was saying a lot of our spiders are very good eaters. Huge eaters! I bred snakes at a couple different facilities now, and my Spider ball python clutches are always my first ones to eat. Anything that's got spider in it usually is right on board and eating before any of my other more. Okay, so what's this one? I haven't, we haven't shown this one yet. Yeah, so this is a single gene spider ball python. So this is what started it all with Kevin and a lot of the things that he did. So he had pastel, he's the first person to breed the pastels and the first person to create a super pastel. And then he was the first person to breed these spider ball pythons too. So this is a, uh, a standard spider. This is exactly what they looked like when he first brought them in. He thought they had a weird, the patterning looked like a spider web on the ball python. So that's why he named them as the spider ball python. And this is just a single gene so no other mutations in it. This is just a spider. Is there any wobble in this? This one's got maybe a little bit of wobble. You can see it kind of holds its head to the side a little bit. It looks pretty healthy, honestly, though. it looks pretty healthy to hey, me. we're it's breeding nice it, right? Fat. This is one of our breeders. So she is an animal that is in our breeding collection right now and one that we have bred this year. So this is a, one of our adult breeder female pastel ball python. So another mutation that Kevin created first. Uh, the first ones he produced were called pastel jungles. And they had a little bit of more of a funky pattern, but uh, when you breed this to that spider that you saw over there, uh, that one will create the bumblebee, which is the one that I showed you over there. So. The pastels have got a lighter color to them. Uh, they usually hatch out pretty yellow. Um, they do dull down a little bit as they get older, depending on the line. There are lines that stay brighter, like the uh, lemon line of pastel will stay pretty bright. But another mutation that Kevin created before anybody else. Look at him doing dishes. That's no bullshit, he's doing dishes. Hey, I'm multitasking. I know, he's on his phone making business calls and he's doing dishes. You think Brian Barczyk does dishes? This is a hidden gene Wombo ball python, another one that Kevin produced first before anybody else. So this right here is an Inferno ball python. This is another animal that was created at Nerd before anywhere else in the world. Check that out. This is an orange ghost stripe particularly to python. Uh, Kevin got these as imports many, many years ago and thought they looked really cool. So these were produced at Nerd. So this is what's called a golden child phantom reticulated python. Golden child is a gene that was produced here first and phantom as well. So the combo looks really smoking. What is this cool snake? These are probably one of the favorites here at Nerd. These are called cow reticulated pythons. They actually hatch out all white and then as they grow, they get spots and speckles all over them. You can see this one's just starting to get some of those spots on it. Look at how pretty that snake is. And Definitely. Kevin had something to do with this? He was the first person in the world to produce it. I remember when he first hatched them out, he thought he hatched out leucistics, and then as they grew, they got these spots, and he's like, I don't know what the heck's going on. We gotta figure it out. I, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call them the cows. So, so Kevin's like an important guy, apparently. He did a, a, has done a lot over the years, and he's been doing this longer than most of you guys have been alive. Because you know, I'm getting very upset because we're not getting a lot of credit in these YouTube videos that I've been going through. It feels like I feel like none of the younger generation has any idea who oh, we are. No, no. I mean, uh, we're gonna change that because I'm gonna blow this YouTube channel <laughs> up. Kevin was a really secretive guy back in the day. He didn't really post too much online. He would show up to the reptile expos like Daytona Beach and Tinley Park in Chicago and just be like, "Boom, check this out." And all right, so this is our ball python room. They're all, all ball pythons. All ball pythons. All of it. This is an entire room, guys. How, how many you think are in here, Kevin? We have, let's see, there's five, uh, at least 360 females. Show some of the more serious issues of the spider gene. He has horrible balance and can do... That's uh, right there. <laughs> that's, that's pretty severe. That is, uh, 
not <laughs> typical of, of a lot of the ones. I mean, I've made a lot of ball pythons and stuff like that. That seems to me, uh, that's a pretty extreme example of a spider okay. uh, motor defect. So that, that that's you've never seen things that bad that, that often. I, I've seen I've seen it all. You've seen it, but but that animal's literally. Yeah. But I do think that ball python that he's showing, and I don't know anything about him. I'm uh, some random 18 year old on YouTube. I've been keeping reptiles many fewer years, not have thousands of animals behind me. So. He seems like he has this nice little tight collection. Maybe his, maybe he owns a couple spider balls or one spider ball, and then he's seeing this one animal and he's basing, basing his example from this one animal. And so this is a female bumblebee. This has the spider gene. So essentially this is the gene that people are talking about that has a, a neurological defect that they're saying. Okay, so this is a visual spider and a pastel together. So if we're gonna look at this animal, I really, I, I don't really, I don't even really regard this as anything. Is there a wobble? I, is this? I, I mean, I think so when these animals, so I, obviously I'm kind of shaking when we're moving, there might be like, like, you know, it's like a stability, like on a camera. So when I'm looking at ball pythons, they're gonna react to us. So there's a little bit, see that? Yeah. So if I stop moving, because I think I'm adding to it. I just don't want to get the head on the ground. It's trying to turn a lot. Nothing like you see. I, I don't. Videos. I don't even see what they're talking. Okay, so this is this is just you know a random random animal. I think this is excellent. I don't even consider this a wobble on an animal like that. I will take out. I do know where my worst wobble is. But I'm going to pull out a couple other ball pythons. But remember, guys, we're basically where is the fine line? Where we're actually considering what is something that we shouldn't be breeding versus something that we should. And I, I really disagree with this 100%. I, I actually think this is lousy. And I love the morph, I love the bumblebee combo, and it's very valuable to me in the fact that I want this in my life, I want this in my collection, I enjoy it. This is not about I need to sell spider balls. I have so many different animals, I have so many different genes. It's a wonderful gene and it's a, it's a very powerful gene that I can make beautiful living art with, and I love them. And how many spider uh, morphs do you think you have in your collection total? I, I have hundreds of spider morphs, okay. for sure. I just went into a rack, the first rack that was near us, right? and I just grabbed arbitrarily just spiders. Okay. So here's a spider leopard, and uh, I don't ever remember this female really giving me any issues. I mean that looks excellent. That that this doesn't look different from any other bull python. It looks it looks great to me. So I love this morph. Okay, this is a, a spider. This is a het clown. Oh, let me just get some. Okay, head clown. So the only thing I could say is this animal. If I look at the possibly the right side, it's a little bit slightly angled. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, do you see what I see? I see a little bit. So the, the thing that I would say about this you animal. You gotta really look for it, Kevin. I mean, you're showing I, me things that I, I, I have to I'm really just, look for. I, I think, but then it's not even really doing it there. Do you think this uh, animal would have a harder life? Because never, of it's, never. It's... These, these animals are <laughs> just as good as any wild. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, what you were, basically people were talking about animals laying on their backs. Not saying you couldn't have an extreme case of the spider gene, where it's, it has a hard time writing itself, but that's not. It's not having any trouble uh, at all. This animal, this animal's great. It's gonna go all over the camera. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> so that here's another one. Okay. What's this? Oh, this is a bunch of stuff. This is a, it's like a spider Mephisto. So hidden. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so this is spider. This is a bling yellow belly fader. Lesser. Lucifer. And I don't really see. Let's see if I put you on your. I'm not gonna like it if I put you on your back. This is the more I'm just actually going through this and looking at this is is kind of alarming to me because if somebody just came in and said, "Oh, we need to remove all the spiders from your collection," I would be so insanely upset because I feel that it's 100% not justified. So if you're basically saying you can no longer put these in the market for Europe, 
I also find that very alarming, and I find it stupid. What, why do you find it alarming? Like, what do you think is going to happen? What's the worst that could happen? This is starting something. We're literally because we're we're trying to be elitist. And monitors making. Noise. Yeah, we have we have monitors in here. We're sorry. All right. So trying to be elitist, and you're you're basically saying, okay, we're going to do this. You never just do one thing and then that's it. You're literally opening Pandora's box. And this is it. This is like, if you're gonna stop this morph, this is, this is, there's no end to it. Is creating a snake with a super cool color, a super cool pattern, is it worth the risk of that snake not being able to eat when it's hungry? And all of the symptoms that accompany spider wobbles. Think about wobbles. So I believe I cannot both put the welfare of my animals Wow. First I, what I'm hearing is a little shocking to me. Mm -hmm. So the chances of breeding the spider ball and then reproducing the spider gene, but now it's in an offspring that can't eat and it fails and all the different stuff like that. I don't, I don't know what they're literally talking about. I produce all sorts of spider balls and they're fine. And I don't just sit here and have to like cull all my spider balls. I'm not saying that you, you here and there, you might not get a, a snake for some reason, doesn't do well, but I also have it completely absent of the spider gene and they still don't do well. I get, you know, uh, basically with a shark jaw. It has nothing to do with the spider gene or anything like that. I don't know what, I can't imagine how these people are experiencing all this kind of stuff. Like they're breeding these animals and like, oh, I produce spiders, I gotta freeze them because of these things. Because I produce spiders for a long time and I'm not seeing this. This is like, I, I can't even justify this. And I, I don't know her, I don't know anything. This is CS Royal, she has 7,000 okay, subs. Okay, I'm, I'm sure she's wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ignorant. So she just sticks to certain morphs, but not the spider morphs. So were we just taking like anecdotal information? So we're saying, oh, I heard about a spider ball or they saw their friend's spider ball, it's twirling up and biting itself or whatever. These are unique situations often, at least compared to what I'm producing. And they're, I think they're literally taking that bit of information, anecdotal information, and you know, I'm not saying there's not animals that don't have issues, but they're literally taking that ball and they're running with it and now it's like ballooning up and I really don't understand it. And I challenge Brian to show us the worst snake that he has, the worst wobble that he has, and then tell us that it is only a mild neurological issue. Kevin, I feel like that's not even a, a big, I don't know why Brian would have a problem doing that. I feel like that's not a challenge for Brian, and I know it would be a challenge for you. Regard this as my worst spider ball. So this is, okay, so this is Kevin's worst spider ball. Quote and unquote, I, worst. And she stands out to me more than other snakes because I love her. Okay. Because she's, she's awesome. Kevin so, sees all of his pets, like all, they're all like pets to him. He literally knows all this. So this is, this is a super phantom spider. Okay. And her name's like basically Lefty. And she tilts her head left. She, uh, she eats fine, she breeds, she, she does everything. Wait, but you they... breed the snake and, it's, and yep, it has yep. the spider gene? Yeah, <gasps> I breed this. I breed it just like That's I breed crazy. my other ball pythons. It doesn't mean that her babies are gonna be like this. So what I do not notice, I mean, if this animal was so screwy and stuff like that and she wasn't healthy, she would never breed and I, I wouldn't even, you know, even want to. But because this animal is screwy like this, I don't sit here and go, oh, now all her babies are gonna be more screwy, because I haven't noticed that. Mm -hmm. I have definitely have not noticed that. I, I easily think this animal could produce normal, normal-ish spiders like some of the other spiders that I was looking at. I really have some fantastic spider combos. And um, just to show you that I'm not thinking like, okay, he's gotta do everything, his argument is this. I need you to support my hypothesis. That, so I'm not gonna tell you that if I breed a spider to this gene and that gene, I'm gonna make it stronger. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm saying that basically if you have the defect in there, it's kind of like a roll of the dice, you could have one that's more, you know, having a motor skill problem than other ones. But I don't see another gene mating with the spider, at least I haven't seen it, that I can sit here and go, wow, if I breed a spider to this, it's suddenly gonna just make them right. I don't see that. I just see like a, a luck of the draw, but generally, it's a rare occurrence for me to make something that's really daffy. And it's, uh, 
I, I end up with ones that are quite normal to a little bit odd. And, uh, but this, this animal is completely functioning. This animal, I think I could let this animal go in the wild. And I still think this thing could actively go and hunt rodents and, and do things. But when you take an animal out of its cage, right now, if I take her out of her cage, she's not comfortable, she's a little, uh, you know, kind of unsure of everything, you're going to see the worst uh, representation of how the spider uh, motor skill thing manifests itself. All right, so this does not have, we're not looking at the spider. I mean, this is actually a super spot nose combo. And this snake, this snake also has, uh, when she gets a little excited, she kind of goes left. And she, you know, you might want to say she's wonky, but she exhibits, you know, much that same neurological uh, anomaly that we're talking about with spiders. And so basically her motor skills are affected. She's a wonderful snake. I, I love her. I just don't, I don't understand. Like, I don't understand what it is we are trying to achieve by saying spider balls should not be marketed, should not be sold, should not be bred. Let's talk about one gene that really took care of itself. And the gene is called the desert gene. Not desert ghost, this is the desert gene. So we knew the desert gene is a pattern reduction, some color change, but it caused when we combine with other different genes, we cause these great reductions of pattern, make fantastic patterns and stuff like that. So Pro Exotics was one of the people that was, was doing it. And we, we just, it just took, took off by storm because we were making amazing combos. It was amazing and people were breeding, you get a male desert combo breed of stuff, making all these fantastic babies. As time went on, we wanted to see what the super is. So when we have incomplete dominance, we want to see the full expression of the gene, which is called the homozygous aspect of that gene. So when we started breeding desert, back to desert to create, if there's a super, we started noticing that the desert females either A, didn't reproduce, didn't exactly grow as we wanted them to, or would ovulate and die, or die somewhere along the reproductive cycle, and uh, would never be able to lay good eggs. So even if they did lay eggs, they wouldn't lay good eggs. And so ultimately what, you know, we have to do successive experiments, you know, it's not just one example of breeding, you know, a couple animals. Sometimes we have to do it with multiple different breeders to basically confirm that this is an attribute of the gene. So with the desert gene, we discovered that the females were non-reproductive. So they could not give us viable eggs. And somewhere along the line, it would, the act of reproduction would cause them to fail. Or what I noticed, I could start raising these females and over time, they just didn't thrive. So I had this beautiful, amazing looking animal I had to actually take special interest in and try to really get her to eat. And I noticed the longer I had her and the older she got, the skinnier she got. And she didn't thrive. Well, if that was the case with my spider balls, I would then self-regulate that too because I'm not gonna sit here and keep, I'm not latching on to a spider gene which is worth $75. I'm not latching on to go, oh, I gotta, I gotta hang on to this. It's an important ingredient but if I really truly didn't think they, they did well and they, they didn't thrive, I would, I would self-regulate my collection because I don't want to keep something that isn't worth breeding, it's, it's not good to reproduce, it's not, you know, all these different things based on what I feel. The desert gene, I self-policed myself and over time, I let it all die off. I didn't reproduce them anymore. Caramel albinos, I did the same thing. We do that kind of stuff. But I do not feel this is justification for the spider ball. And I'm being honest and true here. I really, it's just the way I feel. This is the way I feel in my heart and I'm a reasonably intelligent guy. So I think I, I have a decent handle on it considering I've been doing this for a long time. But the desert would be a great thing. So if anybody doesn't know about the desert gene, go investigate the desert gene because literally the desert gene, once the breeders discovered that this was a problem, they then stop breeding them because only the males are good and the males are fantastic, but then you breed those and blah, 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 and it just didn't work. And people stopped breeding, stopped selling them, the price completely devalued. And I figured if that was a parallel with the spider, we'd stop doing it. So as I'm watching some of these videos and I'm looking at some really severe examples of spider balls, uh, basically the argument is that these animals, they don't like, they don't do well, they don't survive. Or if they do survive, they're only surviving with special assistance. Okay, I have a breeding facility. I have 20 some odd employees between my two businesses. And I do not have people with the, the special care aspect to them. I need to actually be able to keep functioning 
healthy animals and be able to manage large volumes of animals or large numbers of animals but manage them effectively to the point where animals are being kept in a way that I'm happy. I feel good. I feel like there's quality to that to their life. I want things clean. I want things neat. I want things organized. I like things a certain way. And if I actually had these animals spread throughout my collection of these problems, that would become very alarming to me because I'd have all these different animals that I'd go, well, you didn't feed this one because it's upside down and it needs to be uh, basically hand fed this or whatever. I don't have that. that it's, it's not going on with the spider balls. Are these healthy spiders? <laughs> yes, they're healthy. Okay, so there's an azantic bumblebee. Yep. So that's a pastel. That's the recessive azantic and a spider gene. Here we have a clown pied and he's breeding uh, the azantic bumblebee and I also have a coral glow azantic bumblebee. But I can't breed these animals if they are not healthy, if they cannot function without any special assistance. Uh, these animals are quite normal, they, they behave normally and they do all their things. I just, I don't, I don't get it. They, they wouldn't be this size if they weren't eating well, right? I mean, these are way better looking snakes than the snakes we've been watching in videos. These are better looking. I, 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 well, I, what I did see in some of the videos was like, oh my goodness, like. What are you doing? If I had those animals that, yeah, I, I, I get what their point is. I literally do. The spider balls, I can set them up just like I set up other normal ball pythons that have no spider gene in them. And these animals effectively function just the same way. Sometimes you have ball pythons who are a little bit better captives and sometimes you get animals that has nothing to do with the spider thing. You have ones that are uh, shy or maybe not as good of a feeder and stuff like that. But I have a lot of spiders in my collection and they are, I do nothing special for them. I really don't. They pretty much function just like all my other ball pythons. They grow, they thrive. They're actually often fantastic feeders. It's almost like we would say, hey, you wanna, wanna really add a good gene that actually makes them eat a lot? And once again, you're gonna sit here and say, well, he's a commercial breeder, and of course he's gonna sit here and he's gonna validate the spider. Well, he's the originator spider and stuff like that. That's not what is even giving me the energy for this. It's actually, what's giving me the energy for this is I've been exposed to some videos and I'm seeing these little snippets of information that are being passed out there to the general public. And it's alarming to me because as I see it, how it is presented, it looks tragic to me in, in many ways. And the tragedy is that's the representation of the spider gene. So if somebody like didn't know anything about the spider gene and happened to fall on some of these videos, and they see this, they're gonna go, oh my God, these animals sit upside down, they can't eat, they can't do all these different things, and myself included, if I actually found this and I didn't know any better, I'd think the same thing here. And that goes for the same with my own spider ball python. Someone gave it to me a few months ago, they couldn't keep it, so it was shipped down to us. So normally animals like this we would sell or rehome, which whoever gives us the animals knows that, but because we refuse to sell spider ball pythons, we ended up keeping it ourselves. My hey. So if we're looking at animals which are like rescue animals, so rescue animal means like here's something like here's an animal I produced and this is this is something I produced as a baby, you know, so I know this animal. So I, I know this animal's entire life and uh, I don't have any problems with an animal like this at all. But if you get a rescue animal, we don't know what these animals are exposed to. So just please bear in mind that in some cases these animals have been subjected to terrible husbandry, uh, extreme temperatures, sometimes no pest strips, sometimes preventamite, sometimes permethrin, high temperatures, uh, some kind of tragedy or something like that. So sometimes it could manifest by long-term having some kind of health consequence, which ultimately could manifest itself as a motor skill problem. And if we already have an animal that has a propensity to have a problem with its motor skills, and then we put some kind of stress on the animal's life, maybe it's going to manifest that little ner that or motor skill issue and it's going to aggravate it and make it more severe. In conclusion, uh, so the ball python video that we just did uh, addressing spider genes and anything to do with the motor skill, you know, issues, some people call it neurological. I don't really even like to call it neurological because we often look at things like IBD and BOAS and we talk about that being a neurological disease where I'm actually looking more like a condition. And uh, so anyways, but hopefully people can get some value to the video that we did and we have some kind of foundation because I've had a lot of experience with the spider gene. And you can look at other videos and then look at this video. But if truly the spider gene was this uh, 
this gene that was had so many aspects that were unhealthy, the animals failed to thrive, didn't eat, and all that stuff like that. We wouldn't literally be in a room with many spider genes in here. I really love the spider gene. It makes wonderful different morphs, but it also makes lots of wonderfully healthy morphs. So there's nothing worse than being a breeder and then having clutches of babies and if all the babies are like oh that's no good this one's crap and all that that'd be terrible i couldn't do it because i love breeding snakes i love making new life and i really enjoy my animals and uh spider gene's awesome yeah. so we know we know the comment section is going to be a dumpster fire but kevin you want people to you know give their input to you right to say what they want to say to you right absolutely just... don't be afraid sure and and one of the things like he's just defending the spider gene because he wants to sell the spider gene oh Nope, that's, that's, I mean, sure, I'm a breeder and this is what I do, but I am absolutely not dependent on my ball python sales on spider things. I have all sorts of different genes. I include the spider gene because yes, it thrives. It makes super great combinations. It's in my collection. I'm not gonna rid my collection of it and I don't see any reason. Inherently, I think it's a great gene. Good. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, talk smack and hopefully get some kind of value out of our videos because we really try to educate people. We're trying to be responsible, try to project ourselves in a positive light. We want to make things funny, we want to make things enjoyable, but we also want to educate you. We want to spread the word. We want to basically be received as having some kind of uh, value education-wise and also improving your husbandry if you're a newbie and stuff like that. I, I think no matter what, in our videos, here and there, you're gonna get aspects that are gonna make you think differently or gonna give you positive points to help you keep your animals better. Join our Discord, please. Because that's where the conversation's where the gonna is. go. Yes, I don't even go there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs>